Yo guys, AU5 here. We just reached 100,000 subscribers on this channel, which is a huge milestone, so thank you. To celebrate and commemorate, today I'm going to be doing a redo of my most popular tutorial and my most viewed video on this channel with over half a million views just several years ago, the Hyper Growl with Serum. So today I'm going to show you a new technique, more optimized, streamlined, flexible, and badass of how you can make some crazy growls using just Serum. So there's also a free download in the description. You'll be able to see and hear what it is at the end. Let me get into this and uh, let's learn something. <laughs> Here's an init serum patch, but I'm gonna change the saw wave so it ramps down. I'm gonna right click up there and hit generate saw. Now I'm gonna reset the phase and the phase random so that it restarts every time. I'm gonna enable hyperdimension, turn the unison all the way up, set the detune to 50% and the rate to 20%. Then I'm gonna enable the compressor in multiband mode. I'm going to just adjust the hides down to around 70 and the lows up to around 130. And this is going to spectrally balance it when we do the resampling. I'm going to make sure that my BPM is 120. I'm going to set the LFO ramp up and set it to one bar. Assign that to the wavetable position. And then we can start doing resampling. So resampled oscillator B will just demonstrate what this actually does to the saw wave after one iteration. So that sounds good. I'm going to re-enable these effects and let's iterate. Resample to oscillator A. You can keep doing this and get more metallic, watery types of sounds. Basically stacking this hyper dimension chorus effect. So that's good. I'm going to disable those. And that's our wavetable. I'm going to enable the filter and go down to multi LBH24. This is low band high. And it's basically those three curves that are morphed together. I'm going to constrain the cutoff, increase on the drive, and constrain the wavetable position. And by moving it around, you can find sweet resonances. Adjust this cutoff a little bit. I'm going to enable the sub. Assign the LFO to the level. And already it's starting to sound pretty much like a good growl. I'm going to enable two voices of unison, turn the detune down, go into the global, and then increase the wavetable position offset slightly. This is going to create a stereo effect without using any effects. Let's get a different curve. Sounds nice. So I'm going to enable the EQ and accentuate these the formant movement. I'm going to use the peak filter. These are for the low mids. Gives it really gives it that beef. I'm going to do the same thing for the highs, but with in the opposite direction. And that gives it that nice bright crispiness. Can enable the compressor. Kind of smooths it out. You can disable multiband too. If you turn the attack and release down, you can kind of get some uh, soft saturation or limiting. That sounds nice. But 
I'll just leave the multiband on with a lower ratio. Just gives it a bit more presence. I'll enable the phaser and reset all these controls and then manually control it with LFO1. That gives that extra nice performant peak movement. And then I'll enable the filter too. Go down to miscellaneous, band reject. I'm going to increase the resonance and modulate the width. This can further accentuate the formant movement. so I'll reduce the drive in the filter. I'm going to enable mono and legato. Create some portamento. You'll notice that the formant doesn't stay preserved, so I'm going to enable remap, set that to flat 50. Now, as I increase it, it's going to stretch the wavetable out horizontally. So now, higher notes can sound like they're formant preserved. And I can do that automatically by assigning the note number modulator to the remap. And I'm going to take the lowest note and change this curve. Take the lowest note, it's going to be at zero. And then I'm going to assign the higher octaves to be more intensely remapped. Could add some reverb just to give it a sense of space. I'm going to assign the velocity to the LFO rate so that I don't have to use automation to control the rate. Higher velocities are much faster, and lower velocities are much slower. I'm setting it to envelope mode. And here's how it sounds with just the first iteration wavetable. Very dry and sterile. So here's a MIDI pattern I made. And I'm changing the velocity to change the LFO rate. some really cool articulations this way, and I quite like this workflow. I'm gonna slow this down a bit. I'm going to make some note adjustments to make this a bit more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> 
modulator to change the wavetable position for more variation. And you can also just use the remap knob to change the format overall. I'm going to use the distortion with a low pass filter just to get a little bit more warmth. Bring the mix back. Here's a demo song that I made out of just five serum instances and uh, some automation. So that wraps up the HyperGrowl tutorial. Don't forget the link in the description. We have a free download of Serum presets, wavetables, and the bass sounds from the demo song that I made. Thank you again for 100,000 subscribers. Huge milestone. I can't wait to see what the next big thing is that we do on this channel. And before we go, if you are interested in more content like this, specifically with Serum, if you want to get deep and think like an engineer, come up with these new innovative techniques as I've been doing, then check out the Serum Masterclass that I did in collaboration with Doll Nation. It teaches you the ins and outs of Serum from the ground up. Everything that I've learned over the past nine years of using it pretty much daily is in there. So if you wanna become a master of Serum, get the Serum Masterclass. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.